Three powerful storms are expected to hit Southern California with a major threat of flash floods and mudslides. Run, run! Dramatic new video of the deadly tsunami that has claimed 150,000 lives thus far. A swarm of earthquakes rocks the Southland, alarming residents in the shaken areas. One woman's close encounter at the beach. Good evening, I'm Hal Fishman. I'm Leela Feinstein. Forecasters are warning Southland residents to brace for a series of powerful storms expected to bring heavy rain, gale force winds, high surf and flooding. And people who live in beach areas are now preparing for the worst. For the latest on the storm preparations, Ted Garcia joins us now from Seal Beach. Ted? Hal, lots of nervous people out here tonight. They're keeping an eye not only on the sky, but also on the sea. Some of them have their sandbags ready. Others are keeping their fingers crossed. We just put these here this afternoon. We've placed them here, uh, which I guess is a high point for the water coming up. Donna Ray Burton has her sandbags in place tonight. She lives on this stretch of Seal Beach, which could be hit hard by the next storm. We're a little concerned about the high tide uh, coming up over the berm, as well as the water coming off the buildings and flooding down here, and we're at a low point. The berm is the only barrier between these sea level homes and the Pacific and it may serve its purpose. Forecasters are saying the storm could produce waves of 10 to 12 feet tonight and waves up to 15 feet on Friday. I'm hoping that nothing's gonna happen. What we're doing is preparing and doing the sandbags because I was here in the storm of 83 and the one in 90, and actually the water came over, hit the front window and did much damage. And while some Seal Beach residents are prepared, other people are skipping the sandbags, perhaps hoping this is a false alarm. Up the coast of Malibu, among the worries are coastal erosion and waves slamming into these multi-million dollar homes along PCH. When you start getting into uh, uh, surges and uh, tides that are in the seven foot range along with uh, the storm activity, there's a good chance we're gonna have some damage. Authorities are asking residents to get out and assess their properties, clean out storm drains, stay off their decks as they could become structurally unsafe and hope that this storm won't be as powerful as they fear. And we're standing right next to that berm here in Seal Beach. The residents are hoping that the waves will stay behind it, that the berm will do its job. But they're not only worried about the waves, also, of course, about the rain, the amount of rainfall that they're going to get here. And they're also very worried about the winds, which are expected to kick up to gale force here along the coast. We're live tonight in Seal Beach. Ted Garcia, KTLA News. And with a new round of storms on the radar, crews across Southern California are working quickly to clear debris from the last storm, hoping to minimize the problems of potential flooding. Warren Wilson has more. The National Weather Service Center in Oxnard is keeping an eye on the storm. A team of forecasters monitor data from radar, satellites, and computer models. They say they see a series of Pacific storms moving into northern and southern California over the next three days. There will be flooding since the ground is already soaked from the last storms. We are anticipating three to six inches of rainfall in the coast and valley areas, five to ten in the foothills, and even as much as 15 inches in some of the more favorable mountain locations. Cities and counties across the Southland were on the move with cleanup crews pulling trash and debris from storm drains. There could be big problems in urban areas from unexpected sources. Flooding is likely and we could not only be dealing with just regular urban flooding but also the potential for some of the, the um, rivers and streams and creeks to be rising out of their banks. San Bernardino Public Works sent out contractors to remove huge volumes of debris, silt, and mounds of mud from debris basins. They were rushing against time to try and minimize potential devastation from floodwaters cascading down the mountains into populated communities below. This is just one of several catch basins throughout Southern California that's being cleared out in preparation for floodwaters. Officials are concerned for public safety in mountains, the flatlands, and up and down the coast as three major Pacific storms gather strength and head this way. From San Bernardino, Warren Wilson, KTLA News. A lost dog that wandered into the Santa Anita Wash in Monrovia was the focus of a dramatic rescue this morning. 
SkyCam 5 captured the rescue operation while flying above Duarte Road and Pilgrim Way. At first, the dog kept running away from an L.A. County Sheriff's deputy uh, who descended into the wash from a rescue helicopter. Then, two animal control officers came to the deputy's assistance and secured the dog to be airlifted to safety. The cold and the frightened animal was eventually driven away in a humane society's van. There was another animal rescue operation today. This one took place in Sun Valley. A white horse was stuck in the mud after falling into a sinkhole created by quicksand in a field in Hanson Dam Park. The rider escaped and called for help. Los Angeles City firefighters responded and pulled the horse to safety. It was exhausted but suffered no injuries. Officials say riding on sand after the rain can be treacherous, like walking on thin ice. Okay, now let's see where the storm is and uh, what Ross King has to tell us about what's coming up in the weather. Well, Hal, hope you made the most of today's good weather because that is the last of it for quite some time. What's the percentage chance of rain tomorrow? 99.9. That's as close as we come to leaping off the weather fence. Flood watch for tomorrow through Sunday. The coast and valleys can expect to three, see three to six inches. Up in the mountains and foothills, that increases to between five and ten inches. And that rain coming down at a possible rate of one inch per hour. There's also a winter storm warning for the mountains through Saturday. And there we're looking at three to four feet of snow above 7,000 feet. And down to 5,000 feet, one to two feet of snow. Strong winds too at 35 to 45 miles per hour. All the rest of your weather info you need to know later. Okay, Ross, we're going to find out exactly um, uh, what time that rain is supposed to start on the first series of storms. I'll give you it all later. Okay. okay. <laughs> A swarm of earthquakes rattled San Bernardino County this morning. The first quake hit at 411 this morning with a 3.6 magnitude. It was centered one mile north of Fontana and was followed by a swarm of earthquakes ranging from 3.3 to 4.4. Now the quakes knocked down dishes and pictures and jangled nerves, but no major damage nor serious injuries were reported. Caltech seismologist Kate Hutton spoke about today's earthquake swarm. A swarm usually goes on for several days, so I would actually be surprised if we didn't have more threes. Um, fours are about ten times less common than threes, though, so we might or might not have another four. Well, Kate Hutton said that the uh, quakes most likely erupted on smaller faults and did not occur on either of the two major faults in the area, the San Jacinto and the Cucamonga Faults. We have dramatic new videotape of the tsunami that struck Thailand's Khao Lak Resort. A restaurant owner shot the videotape from a cliff above the beach. A 30-foot fall of water approaches as the photographer and his family shout warnings to a man walking on the beach. But the man is immediately engulfed by the enormous surge. At least 4,000 people were killed at Kaulak, many of them foreign tourists. And the tsunami struck with such force that bodies are being recovered nearly two and a half miles inland. Meantime, KTLA's Grant Rampey is live in Washington with more on the world's response to the disaster. Grant. Evening, Leela. In the wake of today's emergency summit in Jakarta, attended by Secretary of State Colin Powell, among others, the push is on for governments around the world to not just pledge their money, but to get out the checkbook. As relief workers race against the clock to deliver basic necessities to the tsunami survivors, the U.N.'s calling on leaders from 26 nations to give hard cash and soon. The Pentagon says it's spending $6 million a day on relief operations. That's separate from the $350 million that the American government's pledged to the humanitarian campaign, money the U.S. has begun to distribute. We will continue responding to legitimate demands until 350 is reached. And if more money is needed at that time, then the president will take it under consideration. It's a terrible disaster. It requires an immediate response of solidarity. That from Britain's Tony Blair, who says his government will give more. This as officials looking for bodies in the rubble fear many more, especially in isolated parts of Indonesia, are sure to be found. I do not think uh, we are even close to having any figures of how many people died, how many people are missing. Their victims who might have been saved had a tsunami warning system been in place. Senator Joe Lieberman calling on Congress to fund a $30 million global network of buoys and seismic sensors that might avert a future catastrophe. And Congress took fast action today to make giving a little easier. If you write a check to aid to uh, tsunami victims anytime in the next few weeks, 
you'll be able to write off the deduction on your 2004 tax return. Live in Washington, Grant Rampy, KTLA News. Hal. There was more bloodshed today in Iraq as seven United States soldiers were killed by a massive roadside bombing in northwest Baghdad. The soldiers were driving a Bradley fighting vehicle like the one seen here. This is one of the most heavily armored vehicles in the United States arsenal. But the explosion flipped the 35-ton vehicle upside down and it landed in a ditch. United States military leaders are expecting three to five terrorist bombings every day between now and Iraq's national elections. But they are determined to safeguard the historic vote. We're going to do everything possible uh, to, to create that condition for them uh, but, the, but we are fighting an enemy uh, who cares less who he kills, when he kills, and how he kills. Meanwhile, Iraq's transitional government announced that it's extending a state of emergency equivalent to martial law for another 30 days in order to protect voters. A local doctor has been arrested for allegedly sexually assaulting some of his patients. Dr. John Baum works as a pain therapist in both Venice Beach and Van Nuys. Police say they began their investigation after one of Baum's patients woke up in a compromising position. One of the patients uh, was on a uh, uh, hospital table coming out of a mild anesthesia uh, when she allegedly awoke to find herself in a forced oral copulation position. So far, two alleged victims of Dr. Baum have come forward, but police believe there may be others, and they are urging them to come forward. A young girl was attacked and sexually assaulted while walking to her South Los Angeles elementary school. The victim was attacked while walking through a freeway undercrossing. That's a tunnel, and now parents and residents want that tunnel sealed off. Walter Richards has more from South Los Angeles. Just to walk through this dark pedestrian tunnel under the 110 freeway at 69th Street, you may need nerves of steel, a face mask, a protective suit, or all of the above. It stinks really bad, and like they be having like a lot of trash in there. Trash, dirty drug needles, and stray vicious dogs. Some of urban LA's worst elements lurk here, and yet the 69th Street tunnel between Grand Avenue and Flower Street in South LA is the path a lot of kids use as a shortcut, walking to 68th Street Elementary School. I believe that all those tunnels should actually be closed down. This week, the tunnel became L.A.'s latest crime scene when a young schoolgirl was sexually assaulted. Officials at the school have alerted parents about the attack, reminding them in a letter to take extra precautions. I will bring my son in the morning and pick him up. If I can't bring him, someone else will bring him. Assistant Principal Sarah Arroyo has one word for the tunnel, creepy. She tells me there's only one solution. We would love that uh, tunnel closed just for the safety of, of all of our students. The sexual assault suspect in this case is described as a dark-skinned black man. He's six feet tall with black hair that had a twist on the ends. He wore a blue beanie, a black hooded sweatshirt, blue jeans, and black Adidas sneakers. This tunnel under the freeway, the topic of so much debate now, remains an open sore in this community. 68th Street school officials plan to meet with police to discuss possible security measures to keep kids safe. In South Los Angeles, Walter Richards, KTLA News. The Texas woman who drowned her five children is getting a new trial. See how a hit TV show led to her convictions being overturned. Wife, mother, school teacher. Now the Southland woman is charged with committing lewd acts with her students. After 40 years, a possible break in the murders of three civil rights workers that inspired the film Mississippi Burning, plus a brief commentary. Drop your weapons! He's a cop killer. The city's most notorious crime boss has just come to Precinct 13. I assume you know who I am. You're a gangster. Why are cops coming to kill us? One of my partners in crime is your fellow officer, Marcus Duval. If I make it to court, his whole team goes to jail. They can't allow me to leave this precinct alive. They can't allow any of us to leave here alive. From the producer of Training Day, Assault on Precinct 13. Rated R starts Wednesday, January 19th. Keep going. Don't look at the thing. Don't look at the thing. Only 260 calories. That's not even a sandwich.
I should make a low-fat sandwich. A Southwest chicken pita. Seasoned fajita chicken, roasted corn, black beans, grilled onions, and something zesty. Fire roasted salsa. Well, bet he eats healthy. Why am I staring at a guy? You're hot. See, I like women. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, you did. Come to Hawaii. Come take a cruise. Cruise Hawaii. Let's go island hop Hawaii. Let's go island hop on Maui. Let's go island hop go. See the best of Hawaii with a seven-day cruise aboard Pride of Aloha or the new Pride of America. Sail to four spectacular islands and unpack just once. Cruise seven days from just $7.99 per person. Only from NCL America. A state appeals court in Texas has overturned the murder conviction of a mother who intentionally drowned her five children. The panel of judges ruled that a key prosecution witness gave false testimony and ordered that 40-year-old Andrea Yates be granted a new trial. The murders shocked the nation. One by one, Andrea Yates drowned each of her children in a bathtub and then called Houston police. At the trial, she pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. And a series of medical experts for the defense testified that Yates suffered from postpartum depression. But the prosecution countered with a medical expert of their own, Dr. Park Dietz of Newport Beach, California. Dietz told the jury that he worked as a consultant for an episode of the NBC television series Law and & Order. And he suggested that the episode in which a woman drowns her children and is found not guilty by reason of insanity might have influenced Yates to think she could get away with the crime. Not until Yates was convicted of capital murder did attorneys discover no such episode was ever broadcast. I did not know it was false. And obviously, if I knew it was false at the time I made the closing argument, I wouldn't have been bringing up. We would have been in an entirely different situation. The trial judge refused to declare a mistrial. But during the sentencing phase, the jury was informed of the psychiatrist's false statements, and they spared Yates from facing the death penalty. Today, defense attorney George Parnham said Yates is pleased by the appeals court ruling, but she will not be leaving prison anytime soon. This is all that we want for Andrea Yates. We want mental health care. From the very day that I took this case on, that was my, own, that was my concern, that, that she be treated the way she should have been treated uh, within the system. Prosecutors plan to file an appeal of their own, hoping to reinstate the conviction. And Yates' own attorney says she will likely require mental health care for the rest of her life. Police have arrested a reputed member of the Ku Klux Klan for the 1964 unsolved murders of three civil rights volunteers in the state of Mississippi. 79-year-old Edgar Ray Killen was arrested at his home tonight. The 1964 murders of James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner inspired the hit movie Mississippi Burning and had remained one of the final unsolved cases from that era. Killen was tried for the murders in 1967, but the jury was unable to reach a verdict. A grand jury investigation found new evidence that led to Killen's arrest tonight. The Orange Middle School teacher accused of having sexual contact with two boys was arraigned in court today. Sarah Bench Solorio was charged with 20 counts of lewd acts. She's accused of molesting and having sex with two of her students when they were 12 to 14 years old. Investigators say Bench Solorio befriended and romanced the boys for a period of time before she seduced them. Ms. Bench Solorio was entrusted with teaching these boys reading and writing. Uh, and instead, these victims had to learn lessons that they should not have had to learn from this teacher. We're also fairly confident that there are additional victims out there. Sarah Bench Solorio is being held on $1 million bail. If convicted of all charges, she faces up to 46 years in prison. Two Americans face human smuggling charges after Border Patrol agents found a child wedged behind the dashboard of a car. Agents at the San Ysidro border crossing snapped a photograph of the 10-year-old girl. She was not hurt, but it took 30 minutes to free her. Recent uh, busts at the border include a child who was hidden inside a piñata, one who was stuffed in the back of a washing machine. Agents say the smuggling operations are getting increasingly dangerous. What concerns us is that 
as smugglers become more bold in their concealment methods, that someone's going to end up dead. The Border Patrol reports nearly 6,500 undocumented children were apprehended at the border in 2004. That's a 17% increase over the previous year. Investigators have released surveillance photos of a dangerous bank robber nicknamed the Ziploc Bandit. The robber usually hands the teller a demand note that is encased in a clear Ziploc baggie. The man is wanted for a string of holdups at banks in Orange and Los Angeles counties. The latest occurred Friday at a California National Bank in Stanton. Anyone with information on the man's identity is asked to contact the FBI or the Orange County Sheriff's Department. Congress today formally certified the re-election of President Bush, but not without a bit of controversy. It's normally just a ceremonial process, but a group of Democrats, including California Senator Barbara Boxer, interrupted the official count of electoral votes. They challenged the accuracy of the Ohio results, claiming that irregularities at the polls left many ballots uncounted. But after several hours of debate, the Republican-controlled Congress rejected the challenge and certified the election. Meanwhile, law enforcement agencies are gearing up for the inauguration of President Bush and Vice President Cheney two weeks from today. And it will take place under the tightest level of security in the history of the United States. The ceremony has been declared a national special security event, and authorities say every single person who attends the inauguration will submit to an identity check and be searched. The confirmation hearing began today for Attorney General nominee Alberto Gonzalez. The LA Times reports Gonzalez appears to be headed for easy confirmation, but senators still aggressively questioned him about human rights and the use of torture as an interrogation tool. Ron Olson joins us tonight from the Times Newsroom with more on today's hearing. Ron. Well, Lila, he has come under heavy criticism, but Alberto Gonzalez says that as the president's lawyer, it wasn't his job to develop final policies. The storm surrounding Alberto Gonzalez grew out of three memos, including one in 2002, which stated the opinion that terrorists picked up in Afghanistan do not qualify for prisoner of war protections under the Geneva Conventions. Democrats charged that the memo said that only the most severe types of torture were prohibited and that they charge helped lead to abuses at Abu Ghraib prison and elsewhere. You were warned by Secretary Powell, Secretary Powell, and other top military leaders that ignoring our long-standing traditions and rules would lead to abuse and undermine of military uh, culture, and that is what has happened. The 49-year-old Gonzalez told the Senate Judiciary Committee that he was involved in discussions, but said it wasn't his job to develop the final policies that caused the wave of criticism. He said it was always the administration's policy that prisoners should be treated humanely. I am and will remain deeply committed to ensuring that the United States government complies with all of its legal obligations as it fights the war on terror. Gonzalez said he was, quote, sickened by photographs of military interrogators abusing prisoners in Iraq. Times Deputy National Editor Tom Furlong. The fact is that he came through the hearing quite well. Uh, there was some tough questioning, but there's no question that, that he's going to be confirmed by the Judiciary Committee. The full Senate is expected to vote on Gonzalez's nomination later this month. His confirmation, the Times reports, appears to be a foregone conclusion. And more on the Gonzalez nomination on our websites at latimes.com and ktla.com. Live from the Los Angeles Times, Ron Olson, KTLA News. Tonight, we're all waiting for the next round of major storms to hit Southern California, and in many ways, we are underwhelmingly prepared. I'm not just referring to the danger from mudslides and flooding that places many of our fellow citizens in jeopardy all over the area. I'm talking about the more pragmatic but essential element of water. We are in the midst of what some scientists say is the worst drought in 500 years. The water level in Lake Mead was getting so low that it was close to forcing generators that create electricity for Southern California to shut down. And our water storage facilities are decades behind the times. The last reservoir built in Los Angeles County was in 1977. And that one was to replace the dam damaged in the 1971 earthquake. Prior to that, the last reservoir was 1957. 
Our population then was 1,900,000 in the city of Los Angeles. It's now almost 4 million, and that does not include the rest of the region. But think of the implications for increased demand for water. Our Angelino lifestyle leads to a per capita use of 175 gallons of water every day. There was a water storage reservoir in the L.A. Plaza in 1869, and that was quite adequate for those days. Today, we need more than what we've got. And just think, as you watch the downpour this weekend, 80% of the rain coming down on saturated ground will simply be washed into the sea. On the WB Friday, catch Amanda in What I Like About You. Then on a fresh grounded, Lily has one shot at getting into the Ivy League. You're not Native American, are you? And we prefer the term Indian. Fresh grounded for life. And following Reba, action has a brand new name. Larry the Spider Guy. You're done. <laughs> TV. Tomorrow at 8 on KTLA, the WB, where LA lives. Now a Golden Globe nominee for Best Picture of the Year. Best actor Jim Carrey gives a ground. Eight people died today when a freight train hauling chlorine gas slammed into a parked train. It happened in Graniteville, South Carolina. The gas leaked and formed a toxic cloud that still hangs over the small town tonight. Authorities say all of the deaths were caused by inhalation of the toxic fumes. 240 others were treated for respiratory problems, including eight people who remain in critical condition. Several airlines are following Delta's lead in drastically reducing fares for tickets purchased at the last minute. American Airlines matched the cuts made by Delta, while other rivals, including United, Continental, and Northwest, match Delta only in markets where they directly compete. Analysts say if the overhaul should run uh, industry-wide, it could reduce annual revenue of United States air carriers by 2 to $3 billion just this year alone. But other analysts say it could be a smart long-term strategy. In Chicago, things are slowly returning to normal tonight at the world's busiest airport. Snow is no longer falling, and that gave crews a chance to clear the runways and de-ice planes. Earlier, a severe winter storm dropped nearly 10 inches of snow at O'Hare International Airport, forcing the cancellation of nearly 300 flights today. And that's in addition to 1,000 other flights canceled yesterday. As of this evening, flight operations were running just about an hour behind schedule. Okay, now let's take a check on tonight's entertainment headlines and let's go to Zoriana Kitt. Thanks, Hal. Well, the Directors Guild of America announced their nominations for Best Director today. And hey, the list is very similar to yesterday's Producer Guild nomination, except only one difference here. The Incredibles is out and biopic Ray is in. Director Taylor Hackford was nominated for the Ray Charles biopic, which has been generating a lot of Oscar buzz for Jamie Foxx. Martin Scorsese picked up his sixth DGA nomination today for The Aviator. Now, would you believe the guys actually never won a DGA award before? Well, Clint Clint Eastwood picked up a nod for Million Dollar Baby. Mark Forster is up for Finding Neverland, along with Alexander Payne for Sideways. Well, it's official. Paramount Pictures has a new head honcho. Talent manager Brad Gray will become chairman and CEO of the Ailing Studio. Now, interesting choice in hiring Brad Gray since his film credentials are extremely limited. I mean, has anyone seen View from the Top with Gwyneth Paltrow? Well, that's just one of the flops that he produced. And this is the guy who'll be greenlighting movies? <laughs> Good luck, Paramount. Richard Gere recorded a TV spot urging Palestinians to vote in the upcoming election. But it looks like locals didn't take too kindly to the gesture. Hi, I'm Richard Gere, and I'm speaking for the entire world. We're with you during this election. Well, there's Richard Gere in that commercial. And many Palestinian voters were confused because they didn't know who Gere was. Others were just outraged at America's interference. The big election is this Sunday. Well, Scoop of the Day scooped everyone on the casting of the new Superman movie by a whole two months. Tonight, the entire town is buzzing about Kevin Spacey being cast as Lex Luthor and his Beyond the Sea co-star Kate Bosworth as Lois Lane. Well, if you've been watching, you know we first broke that story November 18th. Some sad news to tell you about this evening. Los Angeles rock fixture Danny Sugarman passed away. 
He was best known as the manager of The Doors, and he was also the co-author of the best-selling Jim Morrison biography, No One Here Gets Out Alive. Sugarman had been battling lung cancer, and he was only 50 years old. And now it's time to take a look at what's hot this weekend on Calendar Live. Musical poet and Billboard chart topper Jason Mraz brings his unique and experimental musical show to the Ventura Theater this Saturday at 7 p.m. Now, if jazz is more your thing, check out Bernie Mopin and his ensemble. They'll be on hand at the Egyptian Theater this Sunday. The show starts at 2.15, followed by an artist reception at 4.30. For Japanese eatery with a surreal atmosphere, Geisha House in Hollywood serves up Spanish mackerel, halibut sashimi, and yellowtail, all while video animation plays on the walls. Geisha House is open until 2 a.m. For more information on all these events and hotspots, you can log on to calendarlive.com. Hey, there's a, good, there's a good spot for those of us who work late. Exactly, ah, I'm always, like us. I'm always looking for, for places where they're open until 2 a.m. Okay, like so does that mean you're going to take us there tonight? No. Okay. <laughs> Why does that not surprise uh, me? It just does. <laughs> the, uh, the police detective who told actor Robert Blake that his wife was dead testified today in court that Blake's crying did not seem genuine. The detective was the latest in a series of prosecution witnesses to question the sincerity of Blake's reactions on the night that Bonnie Lee Bakley was shot to death. Other witnesses have also said Blake's cries of anguish seemed forced. The prosecution lacks substantial direct evidence and is focusing on Blake's demeanor as part of their circumstantial evidence in when they try to prove guilt. Are you still picking up your prescriptions at the corner drugstore? Find out why your health insurance may soon force you to get your medicine by mail. And we'll take you up on the roof where business is really booming. And I'm Ross King, and so we bid farewell to those California blue skies and say hello to the storms. How much? How long? So many questions. I'll have some answers with all the weather info you need to know next. America's top critics are all raving about Finding Neverland. It's the best picture of the year. And now it's nominated for five Golden Globe Awards, including Best Picture of the Year. That is Neverland. Finding Neverland. Ready PG. Now playing everywhere. I think other people look at my success in a way that uh, they said, man, how did, how'd you do it? If you want the opportunity to move up in this organization, it's there for you. From unloading trucks to now being the director of operations of 10 Sam's Clubs. I've been able to do things in my life and have things in my life that I didn't think were possible. I kind of think Walmart and Sam's Club will give you the opportunity to better your, your lifestyle. That's, that's what it's about. We have a good job, a good family, a good life, and uh, life's good. My name is Steven. I've been with Sam's Club for 15 years. At Edison, reliability has many faces. People planning for energy to meet your future needs and making sure that electricity reaches you. Monitoring the flow of power second by second or waiting to take your call. And always, the crews who maintain the system round the clock and get power back on fast when it really counts. The many faces of reliability all at work for you. For over 100 years, life. Powered by Edison. It's Sensei January clearance sale, where you can buy your mattress today and pay zero interest for 24 months, all the way till 2007. Save hundreds on the largest selection of Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Spring Air, Stearns & Foster, Merrillix, and Chatham and & Wells in the U.S. and get free delivery, often the same day. So mark your calendars for big savings and no interest all the way till 2007 during Sit & Sleep's January clearance sale. Sit & Sleep will beat anyone's advertised price or your mattress is free! This segment is brought to you by Sylvan Learning Centers. Sylvan Learning Centers, where learning feels good. Call 1-800-EDUCATE today. That's 1-800-EDUCATE. Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire, and the Phoenix Suns take on Elton Brand and the Clippers. Clippers, Suns, Saturday at 7.30 on KTLA, the WB. Two new separate studies show that when it comes to measuring your risk of cardiovascular disease, the blood level of one particular molecule is just as important as cholesterol level. The molecule is called C-reactive protein and is a marker of inflammation. While cholesterol forms the fatty plaques that accumulate in arteries, inflammation causes those plaques to rupture, resulting in heart attack and stroke. The way to reduce levels of C-reactive protein in your blood is through proper diet and exercise.
Health plans across the United States are beginning to require their members to fill prescription medication by mail order instead of going to the local pharmacy. Now, this new trend could mean the decline of the neighborhood drugstore. Marta Waller reports. Ted Richter bought Persone's Monterey Pharmacy in Glendale in 1970. He's a trusted pharmacist to his customers, many of whom have been getting their prescriptions here for decades. Filling prescriptions for maintenance medication is the bread and butter of the neighborhood drugstore. That also brings customers in who then make other purchases. But as Ted points out, when customers are forced to use mail order for their medications, small local pharmacies suffer. They come in to get their prescriptions filled, and if they want a gift item, if they want aspirin, if they want anything else, they'll get it. But if they're not getting prescriptions anymore, then they don't come in. Patients can still get emergency or one-time medications, such as antibiotics, but that won't sustain a pharmacy. And what happens if a patient's mail order refill doesn't arrive before their supply runs out? Ted says insurance companies are strict. They'll only allow you to fill either 7 or 21 day supply. And in order to get that through the insurance, we have to call the insurance and take our time to get an override so that they'll let it go through. Employers and the companies that manage prescription drug insurance favor mail order pharmacies because they can get lucrative rebates and deep discounts from drug makers when they buy in large volume. Some experts estimate the largest mail order pharmacies realized 7 to 8 percent of their annual revenue, or a total of about $500 million, from their share of rebates from drug makers. They make their money on volume and by selling generic medications. But patients will no longer have the personal care and reassurance offered by a trusted neighborhood pharmacist. And one more traditional American institution, the local drugstore will be out of business. In Glendale, Marta Waller, KTLA News. And now a check of major stories making news around the world. Johannesburg, South Africa. The eldest son of Nelson Mandela has died of AIDS. 54-year-old Makato Mandela succumbed to the deadly disease after a three-year battle. Nelson Mandela has long been lobbying for a better government response to AIDS in South Africa, where one out of every nine people is HIV positive. Phuket, Thailand, a mass burial was held for some of the victims of last month's deadly tsunami. Body after body was loaded into a mass grave as Thai officials are trying to prevent an outbreak of disease. The government is not burying the bodies until they're identified. More than 5,000 people were killed by the tsunami in Thailand alone. Beijing, 50 vendors fought with police and climbed onto the roof of a market that was about to be torn down. Chinese officials are tearing down the 23-year-old building for safety reasons, but the vendors say this will cripple them financially. The protest ended peacefully, with a few of the protests being arrested. The market was then torn down. Lima, Peru. The voyage of the three wise men was reenacted today in the capital of Peru. Thousands took to the streets to watch the festivities as part of the Feast of the Epiphany. The Magi are almost like Santa Claus in Peru. Children write them letters and ask for gifts. With another major storm bearing down on the Southland, roofers are some of the most highly sought after people in town these days. Well, we sent Bill Smith on roof patrol today, and he discovered a little Hollywood history along the way. Our briefly blue sky has sent Southern California's roofers running out to beat the next storm. A race against time, the storms have the cell phones ringing. Okay, I'll get, I'll get your phone number and address and we'll see about getting there late afternoon, okay? Most roofers, like Arnon Gilboa of Corman Roofing, are jammed. Oh, we're extremely busy. We get a lot of call for emergency repair. By the way, let me interrupt the roofing story for just a little parenthesis we have accidentally discovered. This entire complex here is actually being remodeled from Hollywood's earliest days. This house right here used to be occupied by a young actress named Marilyn Monroe. This little cottage tucked away in the corner here, this was once the home back in the 1920s of a young comedian named Charlie Chaplin. Such a little guy, he even had this little tiny door. I wonder if they know the roof is leaking today. <laughs> I doubt it. I okay. doubt it. All right, well, we got to get back to our roofing story, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, back to real time and the real challenge to seal those leaks. Of course, the best time to call a roofer is before it rains. Write that down. Before it rains. It's very important to take care of the problem, you know, like in the springtime or summer, but a lot of people wait for the last moment. 
And businesses with already leaky roofs are not taking any chances. If we're going to be moving, we're going to be tarping tonight to make sure nothing happens. Yep, we'll all cross our fingers on that one. From up on the roof, Bill Smith, KTLA News. Okay, and time now to take a look at what's going to happen with the weather. If everyone's going to have those roofs fixed by the time <laughs> tomorrow gets here. Ross King here with the latest. Well, the good news for Hal is he might be able to get some clubbing in tonight before the rain starts. Oh, that's, yeah. the, that's the big news at the moment. Here's what's happening downtown LA right now. Temperature looks like this, 50 degrees. The humidity is 80%. The barometer is rising at 30 and we have no winds at all at the moment. It is very calm indeed. Looking back over today, the high was 59, the low was 43. Tomorrow, sunrise just one minute after 7, and the sunset will be two minutes before 5. If you think it's been a little bit chilly, spare a thought for the people in Columbus, Ohio. Look at that. Completely frozen in time. There they are. But since this is Hollywood, enough of them. What about us? Back to us. Tell us exactly what is happening here, because this is the big story. Here we have couple of lows here and at least two lows there's possibly another storm out there waiting to come in as well this first one we've mentioned last night moving very slowly moving even slower at the moment which means we're going to get the rain during the night I'll give you more on that in a moment this other low that's coming in here probably going to hit us by Saturday another one coming to us next week Let's check out exactly what is happening at the moment on the live instant Doppler and see that the rain's at the moment still sitting off the coast here, just coming in a little bit in the north here. Santa Barbara just getting the first touches there. And then we can actually wind the time on here and see exactly what is happening with the microcast. As we put the time, we fast forward it. There we are, 5 o'clock in the morning is when this big, big storm is going to be starting to hit. And as we fast forward on as well, there we are. Look how heavy it's going to be right about 1 o'clock. Lunchtime tomorrow is not going to be a good time at all. So not looking too good at all for the next few days. We've mentioned that before. These storms are really going to come in. Flood watch in operation right through until Sunday. For the coasts and for the valleys, 3 to 6 inches of rain expected. Mountains and foothills 5 to 10 inches and 1 inch per hour possible. That's how hard it's going to hit. As winter storm warning two for the mountains. That is through Saturday. Snow three to uh, four feet above 7,000 feet. We come back down to 5,000 feet, expecting between one and two, and those winds as well getting pretty much up. Here we are. Metro Vision for tonight. 47 degrees will be the low, and we look like we're going to get some rain through the night, but it's probably going to be very early into the morning as well. We look to tomorrow. There we are. There's a high. 56, and of course, the rain all throughout the day. As we said, 99.9% .9 certain of rain. Highs, nothing up there in the 60s at all. Newport at 59, 50 at Newhall, 55 Woodland Hills. We have got a 60, San Diego. That is as hot as it's going to get. It's going to be wet though. 59 out there in Palm Springs and up in the mountains, just up in the 40s. Looking at the five days for you then, tomorrow rain and wind for all of Los Angeles. Rain on Saturday, showers on Sunday. We look at Orange County, coastal flood watch in operation over Saturday and Sunday. It's just so many storms going to be hitting our way. This one coming in through the night, then another one on Saturday, late Saturday afternoon. Monday, the third storm will come in. And if you look at the Inland Empire as well, Tuesday we're seeing a chance of rain, but at the moment that is such a high chance of rain. It's just not good news, I'm afraid. Mm. Sorry, Hal. Yeah, wow. well, that does, doesn't pre prevent going out, you know. What? You, you and your clubbing? Right. Nothing will uh, stop you know, Hal from no. clubbing. Just, be, just because what? it's raining. <laughs> I, mean, there, I do have something like called an umbrella. Oh. I'm not driving a convertible either. <laughs> well, it's the first day of the big consumer electronics show in Las Vegas. We're going to give you a sneak peek at the hottest gadgets for 2005. And here are tonight's lottery numbers. Fantasy 5, 2, 4, 5, 9, and 25. The Midday Daily 3, 7, 6, 6. The Evening Daily 3, look at that, triple nines. Okay, Daily Derby, first place, number 2, Lucky Star. Second place, number 8, Gorgeous George. Third place, number 12, Lucky Charm. The race time is 1.49.82. We'll be right back. Nominations are in, and the movie critics have spoken. Effervescent a triumph of good taste. The WB presents the 2005 Critics' Choice Awards. Join host Eric McCormick as critics honor the best of the best. And Tom Cruise receives the Distinguished Career Achievement Award, the first important movie award ceremony of the year. A poor boy. Pop one like this only comes along once in a generation. The 10th Annual Critics' Choice Awards, live Monday at 8 on KTLA, the WB. Oh, Get the phone. It's going on now. 
the Wicks Furniture January Sale and Clearance. Everything's on sale at drastic, shocking, ridiculous clearance prices. Plus, zero money down, zero minimum purchase, and zero interest till January 2008. We'll pay the interest so you don't have to for up to three years. Hurry, the Wicks Furniture January Sale and Clearance is going on now. Kurt the Cyber Guy is reporting from the Big Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas tonight. He's going to show us the latest gadgets, big and small. Yeah, here in Las Vegas at the Big Consumer Electronics Show, the theme this year, all your gadgets coming together, your TVs, your PCs, things on the go, all becoming one. This just out, Sony V-Series TV PC. It's a 20-inch X-Brite technology inside of this. It not only does television, but it's also a PC inside, and it's a PVR, like a TiVo. That'll be about $2,500. Tiny, tiny thing right here. It is a Microvolt Pro from Sony. This you take on the go. It's not out until springtime. You plug this into a USB port. It takes five gigabytes of data, photos, movies, music, anything from your office. You take it home, plug it into your home computer, and it auto syncs with that. That'll sell for about $250. Just off the boat from Denmark, brand new. It's a KISS TV. It's a 42-inch plasma. And not only that, but it has a DVD drive built into the side. Great design here. Super thin. And it's wireless, so it'll hook up to devices like this at your home to get everything and put it on the TV no matter where you are, including the music. And also, very cool wireless thing, Bluetooth headset right here. This, by the way, is the L510 Bluetooth headset. What it does, very cool. You have a Bluetooth phone. You never pick it up. You answer the call right here by touching this button and go right to the desk phone, press the button again, it hangs up the cell phone, picks up the desk phone. There's more at the website a little bit later. Back to you. Tonight we're going to give you a preview of some hot new cars you'll be seeing pretty soon on the road. Several new cars are making their debut at the LA Auto Show this weekend. Among them, the new Porsche Boxster and Carrera G, it's called the Porsche Boxster and Carrera GT, which features an adjustable spoiler. Audi will also debut its new A3 midsize SUV. And if you want to save money on gas, why not try this new BMW hydrogen cell concept car? <laughs> wow. uh, this car does not use gasoline. It runs on a hydrogen fuel cell. Just think of seeing that on the street. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Well, the auto show begins on Saturday, runs through Sunday, January the 16th, at the LA Convention Center. It started out like any other day at the beach. But uh, for one woman, it turned pretty scary pretty fast. Damon Andrews with you. Local hoops, SC good on the turf, not so much on the court. While UCLA went cougar hunting in double overtime. And the 49ers on the hunt for a new coach and their owners has his eyes set on the guy with the prize. Keep going. Don't look at the thing. I looked at the thing. Only 260 calories? That's not even a sandwich. I should make a low-fat sandwich. Southwest chicken pita. Seasoned fajita chicken, roasted corn, black beans, grilled onions, and something zesty. Fire roasted salsa. Well, I bet he eats healthy. Why am I staring at a guy? You're hot. See, I like women. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, you did. Intense cheesy taste, tender macaroni in three and a half minutes of me time. Craft Easy Mac. Snack the Mac. Dad, did you know Craft Single Slices are a source of calcium? And calcium aids in the growth and maintenance of bones and teeth. Can I have some? You're not the one that's growing, Dad. Craft American Singles. Double the calcium of many other American slices. Now that special SUV you want is gift wrapped for you during your Lincoln Mercury Dealers Wishlist year-end event, featuring wishlist values on the most entertaining SUVs on the planet with an available DVD entertainment system. You can even add Sirius satellite radio. Right now, lease a 2005 Lincoln Navigator 4x2 luxury for just $4.99 a month with $34.24 due at signing. The wishlist special values are only here for the holidays. See your Southern California Lincoln Mercury dealer today.
at Monterey's Hotspot, Montreal Bistro, head chef Tony Baker juggles between sizzling chicken and grilled salmon steaks without ever getting burned. Thanks to my Uvglove hot surface handler. The Uvglove is made from Nomex and Kevlar, the same material used by firefighters. And it's flame resistant. The five finger grip lets you easily go from pot to pan. And we use the Uvglove at home. Get one for the chef and your family. The Of Glove is available at Kmart, Savon, Rite Aid, and Ralph's. You know, you win a national title once, you get some attention. You double down on dominance, you become the equivalent of beachfront property in Malibu. SC mastermind Pete Carroll, the hottest coach around, and the 49ers are more than casually interested. But is Pete ready to become the San Francisco treat. Carroll was a former defensive coordinator with the Niners in 95 and 96, plus San Fran owner John York has said he's willing to throw a boatload of cash and control to the new coach. There's the hook, but Pete uh, apparently not biting, saying today he hasn't been contacted and he doesn't plan on being contacted and he's not interested. Still uh, feel like this story is far from over. Meanwhile, Pete's coming back, but is Norm Chow. The Baltimore Ravens fired their offensive coordinator, and according to a Baltimore paper, had put the Chow on their short list. Ravens coach Brian Billick is close to Chow from their days back at BYU. They plan to fill that position in two weeks. He's a Dodger. He, he isn't a Dodger. Sean Green had one foot in Arizona, the other in the ravine, but all signs pointed to him becoming a Diamondback. All that was left was agreeing to a new contract extension in 48-hour time frame. Well, time's up, and Green is still blue. The trade is not dead, but it is on life support, and it's not likely Green would do a deal without an extension. Where it is, the D-backs want to cut Green's green in half. He'll make 16 mil in his final year if he stays in L.A., which would be awkward to say the least, as the Dodgers have now tried to move him two times. Well, hello, Pauly. The Bruins of UCLA saying just that after starting Pac-10 play in Oregon, but returning to uh, tonight to face the Cougars of Wazoo, a team that has just one win in Westwood since 1966. They almost made it too. First half, Wazoo's Thomas Kaladi down Broadway with a one-hand floater, 18 for him. Coach Howland, well, he's howling because the Cougs were up 17 in the second half, but the Bruins bear down. Josh Ship dishes to Brian Morrison. He had 15. That's three. And the comeback is on. Jordan Farmar led all with 19. He's not greedy. His ship has come in. Josh Ship, and that will work. It goes to double overtime, and the Bruins hold on for Pac-10 win number two, 80 to 77. How about SC? Athletic director Mike Garrett wondering if Matt Leinert can run the point. The SC Hoopsters needed help tonight against 12th ranked Washington, the men of Troy, where the and a turnover, 17 in the first half, for zoning in 20 Husky points. 36-19 dogs at the break. Trey Simmons barked the loudest. Give him a biscuit, better yet a muzzle. He led all with 22. The lone SC highlight, Nick Young, imitating yeast because he was rising. 84-59, though, Huskies. Over at Cal State forward in either its Soul Train line or UC Riverside is, is in the house. Forwarded on the move, John Clemens over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house. He goes, filling it up 34-30 at the break, second half. Beely Morton to Ricky Porter. He's your backdoor man. He had 20, but Fullerton would hold on. Bobby Brown going solo, and that's his prerogative. And once again, Paris Hilton likes it. Fullerton wins 74-71. Santa Barbara, Long Beach State loses tonight. Northridge beats Irvine. Tiger Woods was so good. He was almost robotic, guys, uh, but not in 2004. Le Tigre, just one win on tour. He tinkered with his swing, suicide for mere human golfers. But when Tiger is on, he's more than flesh and blood, proving so by winning the last two events of the season. Now he's ready to show he's new and improved. First yeah. event on tour this season, the Mercedes Championships. Only winners in 2004 invited. Craig Perry showing how he got that supermodel <laughs> six-pack chopping sugar cane. He'd bogey the hole but finished second with a six under. Meanwhile, Tiger Solid off the tee in fairway, not so on the green, missing eight birdie attempts inside 18 feet. He's in a third, five under. VJ, just being VJ, singing like a bird on 16. He's got the lead at seven under par. And finally, Kobe Bryant used to have one of the hottest selling jerseys on the market. Now it's just a throwback, literally, falling from the top 10 last year to 90th right now, according wow. to a market research firm. Obviously, his image has taken a hit, and uh, so have the Lakers. They're just uh, right now mediocre on the court. Yes. Okay, now, Damon, we have a story kind of like maybe a beach or a swimming story. I think mm -hmm. you'll enjoy this one. <laughs> it looked like a scene out of the movie Jaws. 
beachgoers standing along the shore when a creature with a fin moves through the water. <laughs> well, luckily this was not a shark, but it was a female bottlenose dolphin that beached herself on shore. Obviously, she didn't realize that. <laughs> Lifeguards and a marine rescue team quickly moved in. They've taken the dolphin to a nearby research facility, and then they'll release it back mm. in the wild. Aww. That's news at 10 for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Good night. <laughs>